In this video clip, I want to talk about some topics from Chapter 5 of McClendon. We spent a long time discussing the myth of romantic love and the ways in which uh, our concepts of love have been distorted and how that affects the possibilities for faithful relationships and marriage and for long-term loving relationships. Um, how it makes it difficult for us to enter into faithful relationships as we find ourselves misunderstanding the nature of what love is from the beginning. Um, just to hit a few highlights from this uh, chapter that we didn't already discuss, um, there's a, a material in the chapter about Freudian thought and psychoanalytic theory, which of course gives us another uh, contemporary narrative of what love is um, with a focus on a certain view of the erotic, certain kind of understanding of erotic, which is distorted by Freud's kind of um, uh, fascination with uh, uh, people struggling with uh, certain kinds of abnormal desires. Um, McClendon also brings up the work of Carol Gilligan who uh, among many things that uh, she has said has especially been insightful to help awaken um, the field of psychology to the domination of male under uh, male narration of love and that uh, a certain kind of thinking about love as desire and possession um, need not necessarily be uh, a true and faithful narrative to the way everyone is thinking and in particular proposing some different views of, of narrating love uh, from women's studies. Um, Finally, he mentions Augustine, who has been so influential in uh, Christian uh, theology, and Augustine's particular um, struggle as a person with his own uh, uh, sexual use of women and um, inherent sort of disregard and disrespect toward women who uh, with whom he was fascinated sexually uh, that led in his conversion then to uh, seek a kind of uh, answer in, in an opposite understanding of sexuality from his previous experience. And so we find in Augustine then a um, almost a fear of sexual passion um, and as McClendon explains, he has an understanding of uh, the sexual uh, act that in its perfection it would be merely rational and not, um, and not a passionate act. And that part of the fall was that we become overcome by our passions in relation to love and sexuality. And so these kind of distorted ideas in his theology, while they don't make the other important things we do learn from him um, not valuable, they do in many ways uh, have a long heritage of distorting uh, Christian understandings of love and sexuality. Um, therefore, McClendon wants to examine uh, some of the ways that theologians have talked about love and in particular almost all of us have had opportunity to hear a sermon or do a study on the fact that there are many different words in Greek for um, what we call love in English and um, in particular uh, agape and phileo and eros have been used uh, in distinction to um, try to make certain arguments about the nature of Christian love. Um, certainly there is in the term agape uh, a kind of understanding of self-giving 
of um, selflessness and uh, in phileo uh, certainly the idea of mutuality uh, and a friendship and in eros the uh, idea of the longing for um, the beloved and so uh, there there are potential distinctions although what we find in the bible is that the words are not used with that kind of precision actually um, so but so while we learn a lot by thinking of agape and what it offers to us as we look at the way of Jesus Christ and the story, the stories of God in relation to Israel, etc., we need not um, exclude the concept of eros from our reflection on love. And in fact, to do so perhaps is what um, the distortion of Augustine's theology has done and what has created, in a sense, a kind of conflict between certain, um, say, um, modern psychoanalytic understandings of Eros or romantic understandings of Eros uh, as um, therefore making Eros in itself a problematic idea. Um, and so uh, McClendon interacts with uh, Edwards uh, and talks about grace love and delight love and to say that uh, while delight love alone or preferential or particular love by itself when it when it becomes a private system when it becomes self-enclosed um, begins to undermine the possibilities of the virtue of love on the other hand um, the idea of of particular love and of delight is not absent from a notion of the love of God in fact you know what we have uh, learned of, of God through Jesus Christ is that God uh, does love us with delight. Uh, it, is, it is God's delight to be in our presence. This is one of the truths that we hear in some of the discussion of, uh, at times, some of the discussion of praise in our churches is that, you know, God delights in our praise. And yes, that's true. There is a delight in that relationship, in that loving relationship. God has made us as object of God's own delight. And so there is, in the very nature of divine love, a, a kind of blending or combination of what sometimes we distinguish as agape and eros, that God has um, demonstrated love through self-giving and Yet that love is also um, has by analogy the the um, idea of yearning to be in relationship, uh, and so um, McClendon uh, then takes Edwards and a discussion of the love of of Christ that uh, in a way that helps us to understand the difference between the erotic, the agape erotic uh, love of God as opposed to the love uh, that uh, we find in the myth of romantic love, etc. And so uh, the love of God is a love that um, goes beyond um, uh, death because Christ rose from the dead uh, that the end of love wasn't um, the limit of its possibility as romantic love seems to imagine it, but instead the, the truth of love is that, that even through death Christ rose and continues to love us. Um, and that love of God that um, seeks for the... Um, the completion and the restoration of the world and of all creation is that erotic love that raises Christ from the dead to continue to be uh, to love um, us in eternity. But that was a particular kind of death. It was a it was a death of faithfulness. It was a death of not deserting the beloved. It was a it was a standing true 
to uh, the love that he has for us um, rather than um, some sort of glorious death that uh, you know says oh well I'll love you even if you don't love me back this you know this kind of uh, look at my greatness because of my love no it was a love of consistent faithfulness and caring and as uh, the scriptures tell us um, it was a love in which uh, uh, the life of Jesus shared with his disciples and shared with those uh, whom he with whom he lived in this world allowed for the, the flourishing and the development of the fruit, as we say, the fruit of the Spirit, of, of the fruit of love to uh, be in his life. And so it was his faithful life uh, that is especially a sign of what that love is. The delight in, in his beloved was a life that was a life of love. And in every way it was a life of love. And so... Um, uh, in that way, the particularity of love that we know and we associate with marriage and with the um, sexual relation is a love that is not uh, only an end in itself. It's not a love which sort of um, becomes self-enclosed and, and distinct, but it's a love, that love that's shared between uh, faithful partners in marriage is a love that becomes the crucible of in which uh, even greater love can can be produced and expanded beyond a private system that uh, rather than bounded uh, and limited can become love which is love for others you know love of hospitality by sharing one's home love love of of um, procreation by bringing beloved children into the world, love in which uh, we become uh, a home that's a beacon and a light to our communities and to the nations. And so uh, that particular love which finds its object in the beloved uh, is not utterly distinct from agape love, but it's in that self-giving, that giving of the self for, for the, the beloved that um, the fulfillment of the erotic impulses welcomes. And so uh, the two are no longer utterly separate or opposite in any way as we examine love. There is a, uh, a distortion of agape, there's a distortion of eros. But, but the longing uh, for the beloved and the love of the beloved and the willingness to give of oneself for the beloved uh, is, is a um, blending of what sometimes has been distinguished uh, as agape and eros. Uh, you'll take note that at the end of the chapter uh, um, he summarizes not only by talking about Jesus as the analogy by which we come to know love, uh, but then he also summarizes by talking about love as a feeling, love as a virtue, and love as a gift. And these are very helpful uh, ideas that you'll find in Chapter 5 of McClendon's uh, Ethics.